I'm Cree. Good to meet you. Nice you to met. meet you. Hi, um, guys. Change, change the name here. <laughs> yeah, oh, you're Leah. not Leah. <laughs> <laughs> but she's on Leah. That's the thing. Cool. Awesome. Um, cool. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, I love that we're all like crushing our coffee right now. Um, uh, yeah, I guess we can just jump in. Do you want to tell us a little, introduce yourself, tell us a little about yourself, your journey, your background, art school, anything you feel inclined to kind of share? Sure. Uh, okay. Well, I'm from Southern California. I grew up in Temecula, which used to be a really small town, but is like a thing people know now. Um, and then I moved to LA to go to art school at Otis College of Art and Design. Um, I was kind of back and forth between fine arts, photography and um, illustration. I ended up majoring in illustration and communication arts, uh, which I feel like comes through it in my work a lot that that's kind of my basis mm -hmm. but obviously photography is involved sometimes and um and painting and like more conceptual aspects of it too so I'm always feel right straight in the middle <laughs> um and yeah and then a few years out of college my then boyfriend now husband got a job in Colorado and we came out here and um yeah, I've always wanted to paint murals since, I mean, I was in college. My thesis was um, painting murals on really large canvas, like 15 by eight or something. That was big to me at the time. And uh, I would roll them up and put them around the city, hang them up and like discuss it with random people on the street and take photos. And so I've always had this interest in like um, just communicating with people that maybe aren't so inclined to walk into an art space yeah, um, and involving them in that process. And obviously that's what murals do. And I think that that's super important um, for people to feel ownership over art. So that's kind of what's driven me to do that. But back then I feel like murals were not a huge thing. I don't know. And now it's just like gigantic, which is great. <laughs> um, so I didn't expect that. I thought I'd have to I don't know now people are like asking me to paint murals instead of me I don't know trying to do it on the sly or something <laughs> yeah. yeah I feel um, like that's a theme like people you know going from like having to be like undercover in the streets like graffiti and mural art used to be this kind of undercover thing kind of how you just yeah. now it's like no like the beautification of public space and the lowering of those barriers so that people can enjoy it like it's the more it happens the more people are like oh like there's positive benefits to this like this is great Absolutely. I mean, and to be clear, I was never on the slide. Like I tried that a few times and I was oh, extremely yeah. bad at it. I was like, should I tell somebody I did this? I, I cannot do that. So <laughs> <Should> I <own? laughs> I'm glad that I can just be out in the open. I'm a very honest person. Yeah. Excellent. I'm glad for you. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think that's about it. I don't know. Cool. So you said you uh, you ended up kind of with the more on the painting side and stuff in school, but you said you had kind of dipped into photography and stuff. And that's obviously apparent, at least your interest in photography and some of your work where you're merging these really cool images with the abstract paint, um, which I think is really inspiring that mix of, you know, the, the juxtaposition of the real and the ethereal sort of. Um, yeah. So you've, have you always just been inspired by, by that kind of juxtaposition or what made you want to start using photos in your murals as opposed to like just the paint? Um, well, like I said, in school, I was constantly, I was actually a fine arts photo major. So I loved being in the dark room, taking my own photos and developing my own photos. Once I realized I probably wasn't going to be able to do that very often, that's when I got freaked out <laughs> and switched. But I was also drawing all the time. I was constantly drawing. And then my best friend, she was also like a photo major, I think at the time. And so she would give me all her like prints that the color wasn't right or whatever. And I would draw on top of them cool. and paint on top of them. And then, you know, I, I would take magazine cutouts and paint on top of them and book, I would buy books at the thrift store and paint on top of them. So I think it's always been there. Uh, but once I started painting abstractly, I just kind of went away from that. And, um, but then of course it's in me. So I kind of pulled it back in. I'm just always interested in photography. And I think 
uh, architecture is really interesting to me, buildings and homes and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, you just kind of always end up vibing with the same things that are inside of you. <laughs> Absolutely. So. Do you still experiment at all or like play around with doing like photography and film photography in free time or if you have free time? I, <laughs> I, I don't have any free time, but <laughs> I would like to have some of that. Yeah. Uh, I, I want to, and I definitely am moving towards like with the things that are in my brain that I want to do soon. I feel like it's going to work best to just take my own photos. Mm -hmm. So um I want to do that more, but I have not. I have rolls of film that I have no idea what's on them, but they need to be developed. And uh, I just, I need to get back to it, so. <laughs> I love that. That's the magic of film though. You got the one shot to take it. And then honestly, like I, I'm kind of sometimes an instant gratification person because I also love film and like, I want to get it developed as soon as the, the role is done, but there's something kind of magical about forgetting about it or like maybe not having the time to develop it. And you Absolutely. don't even remember what's on there until- I know. <laughs> I, I love it. Yeah. I know. It's fun. Definitely. I think just the fact that it's more of a, an effort to get it developed these days. Because mm -hmm. like was it, when I was in school, CBS was still developing film yep. and that, I would just do it on the cheap that way. But now I don't even, I mean, I know there's camera places to do it, but it's totally a different story. So. Yeah, it really is. Which is a shame. I mean, it, it makes sense, no. I guess, in this day and age, but I don't know. It's hard because our iPhones and all these cam we have such like nice cameras, but there's just something different about the way it interacts with light and like, ah, it's just beautiful. It's um, magic. And I think yeah. knowing how the camera works is really magic too, because there's so much play in there that I think people don't understand or care or know about. And um, I think just intention is so interesting how that changes what you're doing. Um, to just have intention and know that that's your one shot and you have to get it right. And, and also I really miss, I would go to like flea markets and just get, there's always that stand that has like tons of just people's throwaway pictures. Yeah. And that just doesn't happen anymore because we delete all those pictures that we don't like. Yep. But I would just collect weird images of people just like turning wrong at the camera or whatever, just, it's so interesting how those moments don't happen anymore. <laughs> I know. I love that. It's kind of like that idea of like thrifting or finding old things and like previous lives and stuff. We were actually talking about that in an interview yesterday with an artist, but with the photos, it's so personal and like you're finding yeah. family photos and just pets and things and they're just mm -hmm. discarded. But I don't know. It's meaningful. It's cool. Yeah. It's very interesting. Um, so you were saying, so the photos that you've used, and we can pull up some of the murals, um, you know, that I sent you. Um, the photos that you've used are not your images, correct? Like they're generally, are they like historical? They're often black and white and they're kind of, you know, juxtaposed with your really pastel, primary bright color palette. Um, how do you go about choosing those images or, you know, what do they kind of symbolize to you or how do they work with whatever theme you're trying to get across? Yeah, I've always been interested in, um, historical images <clears throat> I'm not quite there on where I exactly where my concept is on that mm -hmm. but I'm definitely playing around with the idea of a space and a place that's meaningful that holds memories for people um I always get really just I, if I see an image of somewhere I've been from a long time ago, I feel like a connection with that place, even though I wasn't even close to being alive at that time. Mm -hmm. But it's just, it, it's interesting how humans claim things with memory. And um, I think some of that is embedded in it. And then of course, change, uh, like the, sh the glitches or shifts in my work are often symbolizing change uh or movement towards something different um and that's evident in the photographs too because obviously that place probably doesn't look the same maybe it's been taken over by a whole different group of people maybe it's been you know built on or knocked down or or whatever so and like in the one that Alex and I did I was trying to talk about that whole area um how it used to be this pass for like Native Americans would 
hunt there and stuff. And then they built the railroad and people wouldn't stay out of that area. And it ruined a lot of the natural world there. And so I think there's a lot of that kind of stuff all embedded in that image. Just like, this is how it looked. We know it doesn't look that way anymore. Why? It just like questions come out of that, that I think are, have a purpose, you know? And then the owl she painted is endangered because of similar reasons that we're not taking care of our environment, their environment and stuff like that. So um, yeah. Does oh wow, I didn't question? even really realize that, that the owl was painted. I just like kind of looked at it in passing and since it's black and white and it goes so I well know, with the I background know, of the photo, cool? I just kind of assumed it was a, like a realistic photo, but yeah. yeah no, Alex like, well, just so, painted that, no big deal. Yeah, just casual, yeah, realistic. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's awesome. Do you want to talk a little bit about the mural that you did specifically for Streetwise and um, you know, just yeah. like the timing of that and what that meant and just, you know, all the elements there? Yeah, that one, um, I was just doing, since it's all about activism and, you know, I touched on what I was already thinking about with those images, I was doing some research on just different areas in Boulder and I came across the little rectangle, which was just basically a red lined area set aside for Black, the Black community. And it was super undesirable. There was you know, a lot of, first of all, the, the river would flood all the time. And so obviously people would lose their homes and like that. So white people didn't want to be there. Um, and there was also a lot of like prostitution and like, it was just like a harder area to live in. Um, but that's where they were had to live. And so I, this house is from that area. Um, so I just wanted to highlight the the disruption of that community and then like later on um like the latino community started living there and uh, you know a lot of the black community in boulder really felt not wanted and you know the population had kind of dwindled at some point so i just was highlighting how in unstable that whole area was and people's lives were surrounding that um and just bring attention to the fact that that exists that it still exists that uh we need to be aware and make change and um yeah so that house was actually the house of a man oh, now i'm gonna forget his name because my brain is <laughs> the worst but um <laughs> I think I read it, it was something McCavey, like when I was reading. John, is it John? James or Mc James or John, I think, or something. Okay, okay. Yeah, visually, <laughs> I'm seeing it, but I'm not sure. <laughs> Ter that's terrible. Um, no, that's okay. <laughs> but he- Oh, here, it's John. John, John yeah. McVeigh. Okay, yes, McVay. so that was his home, and he was like a musician, and he owned a hotel with this other guy, and so <clears throat> his home, was just kind of a symbol of all of those different dynamics and stuff. So, cool, yeah. and then weirdly enough, this obviously this image is not from when he was alive, which was in the like late 1800s. So we can see the VW. So yeah. um, time, time is a theme and <clears throat> all that kind of stuff. So, and then the, it, the, the abstract imagery is sort of this distraction, right? Like it, we, I use it to cover certain things and be beautiful as if like, let's not think about this. Like, cause I think that's what society does. Um, but the glitches are still there and you can see that it's still been disrupted quite a bit, so. Yeah, I love the glitching. I think that's so cool. It looks Thank really- Thank you. Great. Yeah. And also like as someone who lived in Boulder for what feels like 1 million years, it was like oh, almost <laughs> over a decade, like, Ah, like oh, time and time again, I'm just like, it's a shame that like these little things in history are not really talked about. Like, I didn't know about that area, about the little rectangle. I didn't know that that was necessarily a thing. And I mean, it makes sense historically because America, but like, yeah, you know, it's a shame that that shit is not talked about as usual. Absolutely. So it's good to Absolutely. bring it up and especially in this public art way to like, I don't know, even if someone might not know exactly what you're commenting on by looking at it. It's still like sparking that, I don't know, just that cognizance, I suppose, which is, excuse me, important. Yeah, I think when you see it, just a, like, at least for me, if you're even a little bit curious and you see 
the address and whatever on there, you could at least look it up. Yeah. It gives people an in to be like, yeah. well, what is that about? And then you could look it up and that's probably the first thing that's going to come up. And yeah. then you can get some sort of an idea of what it's about. So. So do you, you have the addresses like where maybe like your credit is as an artist? Is there like the address is written there? Yeah. Well? Right so- in the corner to 17, 19 or 18 Canyon yeah. Boulevard. So if you just looked that up, you would probably find that yeah. that's John McVeigh's house. And then you'd be like, who's John McVeigh? And go down a rabbit hole, hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> I love that. I'd love to talk about just your style in general and how you're talking about how in juxtaposition with those images, it's kind of both a distraction and a beautification and how th- that, what that kind of symbolizes. Um, have you always, even through just your whole creative journey, been really attracted to like shapes and like line and movement in this way? Um, and then also I, you've described your work as, as abstract storytelling, which I really like. And I'd love if you touched on just what that kind of means to you as well. Okay. Yeah, I, I was much more of an illustrator. I did a lot of figurative drawing for a long time. Um, I'm also really interested in typography. I have told the story a million times, but I took a type class because I was interested in it. And, but I was still in fine arts and my, the teacher knew that. And because I was in fine arts, she decided I should draw all of it instead of use the computer. So I was like drawing 12 point Baskerville type on like this big type specimen poster and all the lettering. Um, But I have to thank her because then I got super interested in drawing type in like a wonky way like I thought that was what was beautiful about it is to like have it be off um and then so I did that for a lot a while it it was just figurative drawings that were kind of snarky humorous always including some sort of language um and then I gradually just was more interested in just color and line and so you would see you know, maybe I'd have the same thing, but most of it would be a shape or something, or there would be, and then it just started getting into just shapes and color and there'd be lettering on it. And then eventually I just dropped the lettering all all together. And it was definitely a process. And when I had my son, I feel like there was a shift in my thinking because I just was like, do, well, it was also my best friend was just like, if, you're forcing the style that you think you've created for yourself. It's, it doesn't, it's not right. You know, you can feel it when you look at what you've made that your heart isn't in it. And I, I don't know why I just was clinging to it. And then I was just like, you're right. I can do what I want. So I just started doing what I wanted and um, being a mom just kind of freed me up to be like, just do whatever. It doesn't have to be anything. And then, yeah, I just started going fully abstract and um Then around the same time I was in Omaha, actually, I have a lot of family, like extended family in Nebraska. And I was at one of their museums that they have. And they had this whole book section that you could just stay there and read or or whatever. So I found this Frank Stella book. And I'd known about Frank Stella, but I really spent time with the book and I was really inspired by him. And he describes his work as abstract storytelling in a moment in time where things were, I feel like transcendental, like abstract expressionism was, it it was kind of like they weren't giving any concept or reasoning. They were just like, it is what it is. Um, But then there was also people on this being like, it's on this higher plane. And, And then Frank was just kind of saying like, there's still so much meaning in, in what we're making just because there's no figures in it and you can't come up with a story in a way that you have been able to before. It doesn't mean there's not things in there to be used to understand. And I feel the same about my work. There's so much movement in it. I mean, a piece where the noodles, I call them noodles, are more dynamic versus where they're really slow and gradual, Um, the color combinations, white space I mean all of that stuff is a given for an artist but I think when people see it they don't really want to they're just like oh it's pretty or it's nice um but I just want to push people to be to think about it more and calling it storytelling I felt was a really good a good expression so thanks to Frank (laughs) (laughs) thanks 
Yeah. Yeah. Also, I agree. <laughs> I agree. I mean, in a, oh, go ahead, Ines. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. I, um, yeah, I do agree. And it's, it's interesting, like when you come from an art background or you've studied art and you appreciate art, you understand like the connotations that come with these work and like, you never know exactly what is trying to be said, but you try to engage more into like a deeper meaning rather than just seeing it as visually appealing or just seeing it as a form. Um, but I also read that, and this really interested me that, you gather your titles from movies, yeah. um, like from <laughs> subtitles and movies, and like yeah. you use that to like suggest that there's something more that people aren't seeing. And I'm just like wondering, like, what started that? And are you just do you just love movies a lot to like pick this I, up? I don't actually. Movies? <laughs> <laughs> I actually am the worst movie watcher. Like oh, same. my, I just can't. I, I like them a lot, but I'm really not an avid movie. I have a list a million miles long of things I should watch, but have not. Same. It just, <laughs> I, I just, I couldn't, I, I'm like a person who likes humor and humor has always been embedded in my work. And I think life is just weird and fucked up and funny and strange. And that's my favorite part about life. That's my favorite part about art and so that's, again, one of those things that's just in me. So I'd be watching these movies or whatever it was, a TV show, and the subtitles are on. And there's just the weirdest, I just thought it was so funny. So I just started writing them down because there's just like weird, like guffaws or whatever. Like, <laughs> guffaws? Like in parentheses, what, in like, the, what does that even mean? Yeah. <laughs> and then I just started thinking about the implications of people who are reading it, who are trying to make, who can't hear, we're trying to make sense of it through it's like a whole line of telephone someone wrote a script wants to convey a certain thing then another person is tasked with deciding how to convey that sound because the sounds have a lot of meaning in them without them you're losing context mm -hmm. and so then there's that aspect to it then there's this other aspect to it where you come at it from a hearing standpoint and you're reading that and you're just like, that's silly. Like I would never explain it that way or whatever. And so I just thought it was interesting, this whole, uh, just the idea of communicating information, how we do that, what different things mean to different people, how important context is. And I think titles are a thing that mean a lot to me as far as context, because it is like I was saying in the other piece, a way for people to enter the piece when maybe they don't have a really well-rounded art background where they are trained to look at things or, or even if they do, and it's hard to, you don't have any wall text or something, a title can really give you a snippet of something and put a little um, just like energy behind what it is, you know? especially when they're funny like that or sad. Some of those are really sad, you know? Um, so yeah, I just thought that was really interesting. And that's I why that. I do I'm that. Also like I haven't done it in a while. Um, <laughs> when I started working with the photos, I kind of stopped doing that, but I still have my huge long list and maybe I'll come back to it. <laughs> when I read it, I was like, that is, that is probably like the most, brilliant idea <laughs> <I've ever heard. laughs> thank you well it really is I mean especially when it is like the parenthetical things or the sounds or the things that you're not really paying attention to it pulls you into a space where you're cognizant of it all of a sudden and you're like oh yeah that sound was happening but in the end it was background noise maybe it wasn't the most important or it could have been like either way so it kind of yeah. just touches on the entire idea of storytelling which obviously you're very yes. immersed in and like I don't know just how different people different capabilities, different interpretations, like how just, yeah, just storytelling, how that even translates. Like, it's really interesting. And that's the same with murals too. I, I've said this also a million times, but it's so interesting how if the mural is in your neighborhood and you walk by it every single day or whatever, you feel ownership over it, just mm -hmm. the way you feel ownership over everything mm -hmm. that is that you that plays a role in your life. And I love that. It's like how we all have a song that is our song, but it's everyone's song really. And then like the person who created the song 
has a different meaning for it that they created it but once they let it out into the world it's to some extent everyone else's now and I think it's the same with murals especially because they're in the, the communities that people can ascribe their own meaning and really feel connected to it in their own way and um yeah so I think storytelling can even be expanded to that like everyone each has their own story for the piece as well yeah so. I love that that's what I mean that's one of my many favorite things about just like the complexities of humans and like how we attach meaning and yeah it's just so interesting kind of going back to what we said about the old photos at a flea market or whatever like you're gonna attach this strange meaning maybe just because something sparked something in you but it might have zero to do with what that actual image is or was or whatever and everyone just has their conceptions and their ideas and it's yeah humans we're just I sometimes just sit there humans are weird I'm like we are so (laughs) weird and like so terrible and shitty in so many ways but so inspiring and like connected and vulnerable in these other ways and I'm like yeah how did we get here like I yeah that's the question (laughs) we'll just keep asking it forever forever yeah I mean and duality within ourselves too right there's moments where I'm just like man that was shitty of me (laughs) or whatever and then there's times where I'm just like good on you that was you made the right choice there yeah well self-awareness it's everything you just got to be a little bit aware and some people are and some people aren't so (laughs) yeah I love it um I'm a little curious as so how long have you been in Denver you said I'm sorry I know you said it is no I didn't say it has been seven years now okay just crazy it went so fast I know time just isn't real. I don't crazy. Think. <laughs> That's um, I know. How would you compare? I mean, comparing places is so hard and whatever, but like the LA art scene, obviously like it's Los Angeles or even just the Southern California art scene, as opposed to this, like recently, I mean, Denver's always had an art scene to an extent, but it's been booming. I'd say in the yeah. last you know decade or less or however long, um, what, how, what are your, just your thoughts or feelings or like how, how different was that being a part of like this, really established kind of historical art scene, I feel like in Los Angeles and then kind of coming here where things are really blowing up recently. Yeah, I have so many feelings, but <laughs> what, <laughs> all the time. Same, I same. think <laughs> it's a good thing you're talking to me because I have a lot of things to say. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, no, I, it's, it's hard. I love LA so much, I do. I also hate LA. I think a lot of people have that yeah. feeling about LA. Um, I never really, I was back and forth about leaving. It was really hard to leave. Um, I miss just on a personal level. I'm a person who likes a lot of things and people and stuff. <clears throat> Colorado is definitely smaller. Um, But I wonder all the time, would I have been able to find a community the way that I have in Denver, in LA? And I don't know that that's true. There's maybe eventually, but there's definitely a feeling in LA that everyone is out for themselves. It can get, it can feel dirty. I know that not everyone, if you really talk to somebody on a personal level, they don't mean it that way, but it's built that way because of whoever has the power and the money is pushing us to compete against each other instead of be with each other. And I think in Denver, there's much less of that. Obviously it's still there in some way, there always will be. But I think people come together here way more in a more genuine way than in LA was even possible. Um, and and I think the connection here is just, is better. And I think obviously I'd love to branch out to all the places and I'm interested in all different kinds of things. Um, but, but I think Denver has really given me such a gift to be able to do what I want to do and people support me and me genuinely feel like I want to support other people. Whereas in LA, it just feels like you say that, but you're secretly hoping they fail (laughs) so that you can win. And that's so gross. And it sucks, um, but but it's really competitive there. There's just way more people. People come from all over. That makes an incredible art scene because you really got to rise to the top and have something different and whatever. But um, so there's something cool and beautiful about both of them. 
And I don't know that I would have been able to get at least where I'm at, where I'm at right now without Denver support. And I love meeting all the people here. They're so just want good for you. And it's crazy. And it's great. Yeah. <laughs> it's definitely well, an important friendly. thing. <laughs> They they are like we're just people smile at each other on the street. Like I've had friends visit me from like LA, from New York, especially from these places where I don't know, just like keep your head down, look at your feet while you walk. I, I don't know. And I've had friends be like, everyone like says hi to me in Boulder or like in Denver or whatever. Everyone everyone like makes a point of smiling, even with masks on. Is something I'm realizing is like there's an eye contact thing. Like, mm-hmm. and I'm doing this dumb thing all the time now where I squint so someone thinks I'm smiling, even if I'm like not active. Yeah, smiling because I like smiling. Know I'm smiling but even if I'm like not and I'm very concerned that it's going to like bleed into my normal non-mask wearing life someday I have definitely made my squinting more extreme when I smile too so yeah. I know what I mean I like, like I need to emphasize like that I'm smiling smile. <laughs> but anyway that's just color was taking a picture of me and I smiled behind my mask and I'm like why am I still smiling <laughs> I don't yeah. need to <laughs> It's so, it's so funny, but yeah, it's, it's, it's different than in other places. And there, I mean, there always will be that little bit of a cutthroat, you know, we're just humans and we're kind of innately competitive, which sucks. And that's just how we've been built in society, but it is really cool, especially here. Like there is such a intertwining and a cross pollination in the art scene and so much cool collaboration and people really wanting to lift each other up, Um, which I would love to ask, I guess, leading into another question you've done a lot of like solo stuff, but then also some collaborative work with other artists. Um, Mm -hmm. Like, what are your thoughts on that? Obviously, I'm sure you love collaboration, but like, how do you approach things differently, you know, in a more solo way versus when you're like actively creating with like another human? Absolutely. Um, I'm very, I'm not like a take the lead. I'm a very self-motivated, take the lead type of person when I'm on my own, but I'm more introverted. So when I'm around other people, I want to give them everything first and then I want to play off of it, which kind of works for my work because it's abstract. Um, And so it makes collaboration with like Alex or Lindy really easy because I I can just like work around whatever. And that's fun for me too. Like I like painting, like just a straight wall is not as interesting for me because my work has so much movement in it. It's Mm -hmm. way more fun for me to have like a strange space that most people wouldn't be able to paint on and work around it. So <clears throat> to have something to play off is fun for me. Uh, but yeah, but when I'm on my own, it's a whole different process. So I like people to, although with artists, it's so funny, many artists are that way. So I think we're constantly like, yeah, you go first. No, you go first. No, you go first. <laughs> <laughs> um, at least in those instances, it kind of was, but, uh, but yeah, it's fun. And now I'm doing a show with uh, three other girls, three other artists. And um, last night we were all just standing around and like no one would make a decision. And I'm like, it's like you just took the three mo- or the four most introverted like indecisive <laughs> women artists and we're like, come up with an idea, guys. Let's talk about it. And we're all just like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> you go first. <laughs> yeah, you go first. So yeah, it's definitely different. Um, Does that answer that question? I don't even know. Yeah, 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 definitely. I like what you said about because your work is so abstract, um, you can like frame, kind of like frame and like interweave it with another person's work. And I'm sure that just informs your process a little differently, like how you were just saying, like an interestingly shaped space um, kind of inspires you in this way. And and that's what working with another person is, is they're kind of dictating a space and then you can work around it or however. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely. I just love collaborative art in general. I like brains coming together and it's it just is fun. One I of those other cool human list. things that we do. I know, fun <laughs> humans together. We yeah. just choose to be around each other. It's so silly. Oh, but love it. yeah, I have a huge list of artists that we've been like, let's collaborate. And then we all get busy, but I have so many I'm looking forward to. So yeah. That's great. Yeah. Well, yeah. that kind of leads into probably what is one of my final questions is just like what's on the horizon. I feel like 2021 is going to be just an interesting year for everyone in terms of hopefully trying to come out of what shells we've had to build or build mm-hmm. and stuff and all that and in a creative sense and in a life sense. Um, yeah. And you have a list of artists you want to work with. Like, do you have any hard plans or just hopes or aspirations for the upcoming year? Yeah, I have both. Um, I, we are doing a show, Sandra, Sandy, I don't know, 
if you know them by first name, but, and then um, Caitlin Weissmer mm-hmm. uh, and I are doing a show in May. So that opens at Ela Gallery. Um, so that'll be really fun. Cool. Everyone should come to that. And then <clears throat> I've got some mural plans, some that aren't totally set in stone yet. Um, one at Epic Brewing for this mental health organization. That's definitely happening in April, um, <clears throat> which I enjoy doing things that ha- are meaningful like that. It yeah. What is that organization? Gives me purpose. Can you tell us a little bit about it's that. It's called Community. I think I can talk about it because everything is for sure. But um, <laughs> it's called Community Reach or something okay. like that. And yeah, it's just like uh, just meant to kind of promote people talking about how they feel and like being more open and maybe getting help or whatever. Um, So that's really cool. And uh, what else do I have? I don't know what I can talk about and what I can't really. I know that one is probably fine. But yeah, I have a lot of really fun things that I'm truly excited for. And, um, And just experimentation. I'm in the weird... I've never been interested in sculpture in my entire life and I'm suddenly very interested in it. So I'm trying to attack that. <laughs> um, and some other things that I just, last year was so busy. So I'm trying to get get into some things that are more meaningful for me and my personal, just in my practice, you know? Cool, what kind of um, sculpture are you intrigued by? Like, what Well, type? I'm doing this, this is my, like one of my first real sculptures um but I'm yeah pouring these kind of similar shapes that I have um peeling them up and just working with the idea of space again but in a more literal sense like um manipulate and manipulating again which is another theme of mine like stretching these things maybe around corners or like different ways on walls or around different pieces of wood um and uh, maybe making some version of my more like noodly shapes in real life. I don't know. I'm just kind of going in that direction and seeing where it takes me. Ooh, I'm excited so, to see where it takes you. I yeah, think that's great. Thanks. Like the, using the same themes that you're always intrigued in, but kind of just pushing the limits and like taking it from the 2D into the 3D is always really interesting because you're like, what materials can I use? And, ha- and and I mean, it's really the possibilities are limitless in the end. You can make art out of so many things. So it's super inspiring. It's terrifying as a painter. It's terrifying. As a um, painter, it it's just easy. Like I know yeah. what I do. I put paint on, you have like co- different ideas, but you the process is pretty much the same. Yeah. So to be like trying things and finding they don't work is really hard as someone who's never done that before. I'm always yeah. like, damn it, this didn't work the first time. I'm done, What's you know? wrong with me? Like, look at this. I realized that. My friend who sculpts a lot, she's like, no, this is just how it goes. Yeah, yeah this is yeah. trial and error, actually. Working with both, it's like, it's so easy to like visualize it. And in 3D work, you just have this clear image of exactly what you want and you expect it to turn out exactly how you want. And then it's like a completely different result. And you're like, I guess this will do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is fun. Or I don't know. And a lot of sculpture stuff can be really harmful too. Like in reality, I'm like maybe I should use resin, and I'm like I'm not gonna do that. (laughs) So I don't know. There's a lot of stuff like that where it just seems like so much extra effort, and I'm I'm building up to it. It's not that I'm afraid of effort, but I it's new to me a little bit. That's awesome. Super exciting to start new things. Yeah, it's good. It's good. I get bored otherwise, so can't be yeah. bored. Yeah. <laughs> so anything but boredom, please. <laughs> yes, exactly. I'm good at entertaining myself and creating obstacles for myself. Yes. Well, that's good to hear. Um, yeah. Well, this was great. I think that that pretty much wraps up anything I was curious great. about. Inez, do you have any questions? No, I think we covered everything. Cool. Well, Sweet. thank you so much well, for so joining. Well, so good to talk to you guys. Great. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love these. You. I love when there's just an organic flow of conversation. That's my favorite. It's mm-hmm. the best. I agree. Having a convo about art is, I think that's what I'm missing too. I think yeah. I can't wait till we get back to being together and just yeah. being able to talk about the work and stuff. Being in a vacuum is really weird and not Absolutely. helpful. 
No, <laughs> so totally <it's> good. <laughs> Great. Yes. Yeah, so thank well, you for joining us. Yeah. Have a good bye, one, guys. guys. You too. Bye. bye.